It's time now for another edition of Coach's Corner here on Crusaders TV. Taylor Medic, and I'm pleased to be joined by Crusaders head coach Adam Mana. We're through the first 15 games, the first quarter of the Alberta Junior Hockey League 2017-18 season. You guys are at a record of 7-7-1 seven, seven, and one here in Sherwood Park, Adam. And first off, uh, let's just get the first 15 games as a whole. Uh, you put those, uh, those into words, I guess. Uh, a little bit, uh, a little bit up and down, I would say. Uh, you know, we feel we uh, we played some really good games, and then we we felt that we uh, haven't been up to par in, in some of them as well. And and uh, for us as a group, we uh, we just need to tighten up that consistency a little bit and make sure that uh, you know we try and put a streak together here in the next 15 games so that we can put ourselves in a spot to to uh, you know hopefully climb up into into the top four where you want home ice advantage in the first round. And uh, obviously we're we're young, but uh, we're not using that as a as an escape code or anything like that. Like the the chance for us to, to be right in that mix is there, and, and we have to continue to to get better and strive for that. Yeah, I was gonna say, you know, your guys have really done a good job, especially the younger players, not using youth as an excuse. And and they say, especially uh, when I talked to William Zapernick, uh, forward for you guys, he said, you know, we are young, but we're not using that as ex as an excuse. Obviously, you're finding that uh, that statement has echoed down onto the players, and and it's not being used in, as an excuse right now. Yeah, and, and that's what we want to do instill right from day one is, uh, you know, whether we're young or not, it's really, you know, not a way that we can just look to use, you know, out, uh, you know, of any tough situation. So for, for our group, we want to continue to instill that uh, – you know that that brand and and that culture of you know it doesn't matter if we're young or if we're old we have to be good every night and, and it doesn't matter who we're playing we have to make sure that uh you know we're putting our best foot forward and and for the you know for our for our group being young uh they've done a good job like you said and and really we're off to a better start this year than we than we were last year with an older group so uh, all in all um you know not bad so far well, part of the reason to uh, the seven wins and, and, you know, being in close games has been the play of your veteran players in uh, Ty Reedman, Meredith Zitko, Brandon Wallace. Uh, you know, the, the list can go on. Ben McLeod, when he's in the lineup, uh, very effective uh, as well. Since coming back, you know, when we spoke uh, last time, Ben McLeod wasn't in the in the fold and he decided to, uh, to return to the Crusaders. So he's back in there. But let's talk about Ty Reedman. Tied for the league lead in scoring with Jordan Tobert of the uh, Drumheller Dragons heading into uh, the weekend here in uh, in late October. But uh, Ty, you know, through the first 15 games of the season, done really well. He's playing well with Merritt as well as uh, Tyler Pang, defenseman who you brought in, commits to Northern Michigan. Uh, you know, he really is the uh, the straw that stirs your drink uh, offensively uh, for this hockey club. 100%. And uh, I know you mentioned Tobert there, and it's it's kind of uh, you know it's 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 really good for the league to see probably two of the smallest guys in the league uh, lead lead the league in scoring right now so um, you know that that just tells you it doesn't doesn't matter if you're six foot four or five foot six like Ty is uh, you know if you're if you're a, a player that's that skilled and and uh, can make things happen out there then you're gonna have success and um, you know for Ty uh, he's he's played real well so far through the first 15 games he's he's really uh, obviously form that chemistry with Merritt as it's yeah. continued along and they played together for for a long time now but um, you know he's had different uh, they've had different right wingers on on their side whether it's uh, Zapernick or Wallace or or Eric Miller uh, you know who we've just acquired so uh, you know they've, they've done a good job of helping out whoever's jumped onto their line and uh, for Ty he just does his thing he's he's he competes extremely hard. Uh, he can, you know, obviously he's got great speed with, with when he has the puck, and uh, you know on the power play he's he's uh, lethal. But uh, five on five is probably the biggest thing that uh, you know we preach to both him and Merritt is that they have to be good five on five, not not to be scored on against and play well defensively, but um, you know they have to make things happen offensively five on five because when, once we get to the playoffs that's what uh, you know that's the majority of the gameplay is five on five. So you have to be good in that area. Are you finding that there's maybe more of a target on Reedman's back as it goes back? Because the big question was coming into the year, you know, how especially for Ty, how is he going to handle you know life without Tyler Maltby, his big line mate from last year, uh, where they were able to pick up a ton of points? Obviously, it looks like Ty's doing okay. Through the first 15 games, do you see more and more att attention being paid to Ty? on a night in night out basis just the fact that now you know everyone knows that this guy can play 
Oh, I would, I would think so. Uh, I would say that's a hundred percent guarantee. Uh, you know, f we expect, especially when we're playing the White Court, Spruce Groves, uh, Bonnyvilles, um, you know, Fort Max, especially in the North Division, that they're going to be paying very, very close attention, and they're going to try and uh, get the matchups, especially when they're at home. Um, but you know, for Ty and and uh, even Merritt, you know, they 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 can't worry about those matchups. That's where they have to. You know that's going to be the the next learning curve for them is how to play through those uh, matchups and how to, you know, essentially just be better uh, and and find ways to continue to score us big goals and um, you know our, our overall as a young group we're you know a lot of guys are learning how to play uh, in those big games and in in those tough games and that's something that we're going to have to definitely get better at but uh, for Ty and Merritt uh, you know for example Saturday night in Fort Mac that uh, that line really. Uh, you know, really carried us uh, in a tough building, and and we found ways to come back and and compete with, uh, you know, what's arguably one of the best teams in the league. Yeah, not only the league, but uh, the country, and they were able to uh, defeat uh, the Okotoks Oilers, handing them their first loss to the Fort McMurray Oil Barons. We're speaking of. Uh, back to your team, though. Uh, secondary scoring, uh, you are getting it. It is kind of spread around, and it, it comes in different ways from different people. It seems. Are you wanting to see more consistency out of? You know, you, you never like to admit that you have second and third and fourth lines. You see it as this, it's just four lines you got. But are you wanting to see a little more from guys uh, consistently? Uh, yes, yes, point blank, yes. Uh, we, uh, you know, the, the Dylan Stewarts, the Ryan McKinnons, you know, two, two guys that are 20, they need to, uh, you know, make sure that they're contributing every night. And, and we can't just rely on Ty Merritt and, and uh, whether it's Brandon Wallace or, or uh, Eric Miller, whoever's playing up with them, uh, you know, we have to find ways of getting that secondary scoring like you just mentioned. And, and you can't rely on our young guys to do all the scoring either. That's where your veteran, uh, you know, and I know we don't have a lot of veterans, but that's where they have to make sure that they're sharp every night and that they're they're contributing with uh, with a goal or two. And, and that, that goes a long way because if Reedman's line does their thing and they get us one or two and we get that extra goal or two from, uh, you know, our, you know, one of the or two of the other three lines, then we're scoring four for a game and if we can do our job defensively then you're probably going to come out on the right side most you know the majority of the time but um you know for our for our young guys you know even Kleger or uh, you know Franzak or Eric Blanchett or any of those guys they uh you know they have to continue to work on their game in terms of you know how do I how do I adapt and how do I score a goal at this level uh, whether it's getting to the front of the net hard or or just simply putting more pucks on net um, that's something that we've tried to preach to the group as well is, is just, uh, you know, firing more pucks and you just never know. It'll either create a second opportunity or it might just go in. Well, you look at uh, the back end now, we'll move to that. Uh, as uh, we, we kind of touched on, Ben McLeod comes back, only returning defenseman from last year's team to come and play for the Crusaders, serving a suspension right now. But it's been Tyler Pang who has been, uh, I guess, as advertised because when you guys recruited him, you expected him to be that point producing defenseman great on the power play very good at exiting the zone with the puck whether it's a pass or he skates it or uh, you know just uh, sends it up ice and somehow it finds Ty Reedman for a breakaway that sort of thing but you you have a good mix of, of some veterans some rough and tumble kind of skill and then you know guys like a paid McIsaac who comes back to you uh, a young guy with a lot of potential whether that be offensively or just in his own zone and, and the ruggedness you know how do you describe uh, the decor that you have uh, here in Sherwood Park right now besides young uh, you know coming yeah. uh, nicely coming along uh, you know we talked about it uh, after that game in Fort Mac we said well you look at our back end, we had three 17-year-olds in, an 18-year-old in Pang, and, and then you had Callison and Bricks, who are 20s. McLeod was obviously suspended. Um, so when you look at it that way, and you got Bents, you know, you got Bensey in there as well. So so that's, uh, you know, essentially that's our back end. You have about four 17-year-olds, an 18-year-old, and two 20-year-olds. So it's, we're not the oldest decor in the league, and, and we knew we were going to be young. And, yeah. and and again, there's, there's no excuses, but we've liked how... Uh, you know the whole group has come together, but uh, but our back end has has continually gotten better as as we've gone along, and and they're starting to move pucks better, and they're starting to gain some confidence. And um, you know, sure, there's going to be the odd mistake here and there. You know that's going to happen, but uh, you know for the most part, we're we're extremely excited about what we have on the back end and and how we're going to continue to progress. And it's only like you said, the first quarter of the season. So um, you know if they continue to work hard, uh, especially in practice. And uh, we can teach them through video uh, in games. Then hopefully, uh, you know, we'll 
we'll continue to get better as a group, especially on the back end. And if that gets better, then hopefully we're, again, going to come out on the right side more times than not. Goaltending, you know, it's it, it, up and down to start the year. You had to to move some pieces around, trying to figure things out, uh, even with, with some injuries as well, dealing with that. But it looks like uh, for the time being, you've found a solid tandem as uh Kyle Chase, your GM, was able to acquire Josh DeShane from LaRonge of the uh, Saskatchewan Junior Hockey League. He was with the Edmonton Oil Kings in the Western Hockey League, so he stays kind of close to uh, his parent club. But now that uh, everyone's healthy and you feel you have the right guys in between the pipes, uh, you know, what's the ceiling for your goaltending right now, you, you find? Uh, well, it's, the sky's the limit for, uh, for both of them. Uh... You know, Josh is Shane, great kid. He's come in. Uh, he's worked. He's worked extremely uh, hard in the couple practices that he's been out, and you can just tell he's a great kid. He's got good character, good leadership. Uh, comes from a great program in the Oil Kings. Um, so you know, we're we're extremely excited to have him, and he played real well. We threw him into the fire in, in the first game there in Fort Mac, uh, and couldn't have played better, and couldn't have given us uh, you know a better chance to win. If you ask him, uh, he probably uh, would say that he still needs to be better, but uh, you know going against the number one team in the league uh, in your first game, thought he handled it very well. And then, uh, you know, obviously Brandon Vogel has been just rock solid all year uh, uh, for us in the pipes. And, and, you know, besides him being sick for a couple of weeks in which we, you know, desperately missed him in those, in those two weeks, um, you know, he's been, uh, he's been really good and, and uh, he's settling in nicely. So we, uh, we really like our goaltending tandem now. And that's probably, uh, you know, the first time that we could say that for, uh, you know, for at least ever since uh, you've been here. Well, yeah, yeah, and that's that's going on, uh, you know, three years now. So, so we're 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 excited to say the least, and hopefully it'll continue to work out, and they'll uh, both battle to to stay in the pipes. Absolutely, and that is credit to GM Kyle Chase, like we said, uh, acquiring DeShane for future considerations. He's also been able to bring in some guys from the Western League, Eric Miller, who had a fantastic debut uh, <laughs> against Lloyd Mincer, scoring two goals. He probably could have had a hat-trick in that one, almost his first shot he almost scored. But just touch on what Kyle has been able to do in terms of giving you pieces to compete uh, so far this season with the uh, 500 record maybe just under because of that one overtime loss well speaking of uh speaking of miller we're wondering when uh spencer's going to jump on the the whole miller time thing uh, everybody's saying it well uh, miller time is already is already here in shirt park we know that so um no but uh, but uh, you're exactly right eric had seven scoring chances in his first game against lloyd so that's uh that's a pretty immediate impact but uh in terms of the job that kyle's done it's been uh it's been outstanding. Like for for myself and Jeff, we we're lucky to have a guy like like Kyle as our GM because uh, he works extremely hard behind the scenes, and that's something that that people don't really get to see because uh, you know people don't see the work that he does uh, on the phones or uh, you know talking to Western Hockey League teams or uh, you know or other teams around uh, the AJ or BC or or the SJ. So um, you know we're we're always looking to get better, and Kyle's the first to say it. And um, you know, unfortunately, it's it's you know, well, it's it's a business. So uh, guys have to earn their spot every day, and and if you're not, it, you know, you're gonna be uh, you're you're at risk of being replaced by a better guy. So um, you know, that's the message that continues to get preached to our group. And and uh, again, for you know, for the job that Kyle's done, it's it's been pretty uh, it's been pretty spectacular on that side because uh, you know we built this team and. Uh, a lot of people probably thought we wouldn't be at seven, seven, and one through 15 games, and um, you know, hopefully, like we like we said, hopefully we'll just continue to go up and, and get better. Well, you're right in the thick of things, and, and you're trying to hound down uh, Grand Prairie right now, uh, who are uh, four points ahead of you in the standings heading into uh, this weekend, and you don't see them until November. I, I, are you going to get all six games? It seems against Grand Prairie. I know you play them three times in a row in the month of November, uh, so we won't jump quite ahead to that. But a stat that you kind of threw at me, and and it's kind of easy to figure out, is uh, your record. Uh, for one, here at the Shrewd Park Arena, you obviously want it to be better. Only two wins so far this year, out of uh, six opportunities, uh, and then against teams. 500 or under or below you in the standings I guess maybe to just in layman's terms you're good against teams above you not so much is that you know we don't want to say an excuse of being a young team but when you get into some of those games like in Fort Mac uh, or or against the Brooks Bandits etc a drum heller as well who has uh, some experience 
it's just it's that much tougher to play those teams when when you are maybe inexperienced versus young. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And then again, like you said, we don't want to use it as an excuse, but the reality is it, it is going to be tougher when you know you got some you know big sleds on Fort Mac, for example. We we looked at them in warm up. I thought it was the football team dressed up that they they have the provincial football team up there. I literally thought they were all skating when I was watching the warm ups. Holy cow! Yeah, honestly, we were uh, we were like, wow, they're big, um, but. Uh, you know that's that's just uh, like you just mentioned. Like against teams under 500 right now, we're six and two. Um, you know, teams above 500, we're one five and one. So the you know the stats never lie, and and that's why you you have you know you evaluate those stats as a coach and as a as a staff is to see where your weaknesses are, where you have to get better. And uh, it's not like in those seven games against those above 500 teams, we haven't been in the games. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've competed extremely well for the most part. It's it's just a matter of. Like you mentioned, uh, sometimes it's that that youthful mistake that that we have, uh, you know, in a critical game with four minutes left in the third or 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 whatever it might be. Um, that's just the learning process, and and unfortunately, you don't you don't want to lose those games uh, the way you do by by something that's so simple or or an error. Um, but you know, it's the reality of the situation, and you have to kind of just you know look at the positives and say, well, we did get. Uh, you know, we did get 32 shots, you know, against Fort Mac the other night. We we battled back from 3-1 and 4-2 down in a tough building. And, and that's and that's good signs for a young group that's, uh, you know, coming together slowly here. And, and uh, you know, we can always build off that. And hopefully at some point we're going to learn from those mistakes and it's going to turn around for us, especially against those tough teams. You know, the one team, though, that is a thorn in your side and you were just there this week in your last game, uh, the Bonneville Pontiacs, they've outscored you 12-3. to uh, in the two games that you have played them. You did get credited for the victory uh, the first time around earlier in the month, but when it's all said and done, things haven't gone too well at the RJ Lalonde Arena for you. I mean, what, is it the uh, the neutral zone that they don't, is it the ice surface? Again, inexperience from the guys that don't know how to either play in a building or have never been in a building. I mean, I think the little dinky rink at uh, Broadmoor has a bigger neutral zone than the RJ Lalonde Arena. I, not to be funny, but it, is that possible? Uh, well, definitely. Yeah, it's it's the first time we went into Bonnie, we looked like an you know we looked like an intimidated group. Uh, you know, the guys were you know, and we we talked about it beforehand in our game prep. Is uh, for a lot of the a lot of the new guys here, the, you haven't played a game in the RJ Lalonde, and it's not a it's not a fun rink to go in and play. Um, you know, it's smaller or it seems smaller, and uh, the neutral zones are obviously tiny, and uh, you don't have as much time and space with the puck, so you're going to get hit. And if you're not willing to take hits or give hits. Uh, you know, Bonneville plays that rink to a T. They they build their team right, you know, around that rink. Um, so, you know, we we didn't. I don't want to say we didn't mind our game on Sunday. It wasn't. Uh, it, I don't think it was a five-one game by any means. Um, you know, it was two-one. You know, probably about uh, ten minutes into the third, and then they got three in the back half. But uh, we still weren't very good overall as a group, and and we had numerous chances on the power play to. To, to either tie it up or, or go ahead. And, and we just, uh, well, to say the least, we were abysmal on the power play. So uh, in, in an area that's been quite strong for us all year. So yeah. um, unfortunate timing, but it is what it is. And we're going to have to find a way to, again, learn how to play in that rink and, and find a way to, to grind those out. Quickly on the power play, is it just a matter of execution? I mean, you guys can move the puck around. You got the, you know, the best player in the league in Ty Reedman, uh, you know, some would say uh, out there. Is it just a case of being able to get the puck in the net? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, like in Bonneville, for example, it was more our breakout and our entries that was the issue. Uh, again, maybe because the small neutral zone, it seems like they're right on top of you. Um, but, you know, we talked about in the pregame of just making, you know, you have one of three options. You got to read and react which one is the best one, and you got to take that one. And unfortunately, we did not read uh you know their penalty kill four check correctly and and we didn't make i guess strong decisions so uh that that hampered us on the power play and and uh it definitely comes down to execution whether it's on the breakout on the entries or in the zone and uh that's you know all three areas we were not so good in on sunday all right let's look ahead to this next segment and it starts right away i mean murders row for you this past two weeks you get fort mcmurray Spruce Grove and Whitecourt all within seven days. 
Uh, and then after that, you're going to see Grand Prairie. We mentioned three or four times off the top of my head, can't remember. Uh, White Court a couple more times and then sprinkle in a little Drayton Valley and, and Lloyd Minster. But you've got some real tough games coming up. Exciting, but uh, what do you make of uh, the schedule in November and coming up this week as you take on Spruce Grove Friday and then White Court here on Saturday? I like how you name it Murderer's Row. Is it because it's October and Halloween's coming? And uh, <laughs> Maybe. And he's got the whole Fear Factor uh, movie lineup going on right now. I was watching some of that yesterday. It's pretty good, though. But um, but you're exactly right. It's going to be a very tough schedule in November. And, uh, you know, Jeff said it in the room actually before practice. He's like, I, I like how we play Spruce Grove and White Court this weekend. Absolutely, and, yeah. um, you know, let's, let's continue to test our group every single night. And really, there's no... You know, I, I replied back to Jeff saying, well, we don't have any – there is no easy games anyways in the league. So, no matter who uh, you Yeah, no matter who you play. But, but I mean, when you're going against, uh, you know, the White Courts and the Spruces, uh, who are in the top three in the north, it's, it's definitely going to, you know, be a, be a test for you. So, um, for our group, I think, you know, we feel it's a good thing because we, we have to continue to learn how to play in these big games. And, uh, you know, we keep stressing to the group, being in the games – you know, and losing 2-1 or, or losing 3-2 isn't good enough. We can't be continue to compete and be right there but not take the next step in, again, either getting it to overtime, finding a way to tie it, yeah. or just outright winning the game. And, and that's that's our challenge is, is finding a way to take that next step. Uh, and, and if we can do that, then, like we said, we'll, we'll start to get some Ws against some of these teams. But, um, you know, close, close but, uh, but not good enough right now. So we have to find a way. Yeah, and you don't want your group to be satisfied with with just being okay. You want you want something more. Well, we'll let you go, Adam. I know uh, you're going to head out to uh, Red Deer tonight to catch former Crusader Lane Zablocki with the Red Deer Rebels against David Quinville, younger brother of former Crusader Peter Quinville. And Dave played a few games uh, in his uh, midget days for the Crusaders, so it should be exciting as you you head down to Coach Wawitka's old uh, stomping grounds. So thanks a lot for joining me for for these. Uh, we're a quarter way through the year. I mean, time does fly, but uh, now you guys hit uh, another stretch here of some exciting games, and we'll talk to you at the halfway point. Sounds good. Thanks a lot, Taylor.